way back, I decided I was going to be a famous artist, but I got over that quite fast. <laughs> <laughs> My father was always into building something, and I, I was allowed to work with him on quite a bit, of it, and we did something called the Bird and Bottle Inn in New York State, which was an old colonial inn. We, we, we redid it and opened it just before the Second World War, closed it and reopened it after the war, but d d during the uh, construction time, I was very much a part of it. I did a lot of work at the Brearley School, mainly painting and some ceramics. Then when I went to boarding school, I had an opportunity to join art classes every year, but there was no such thing as art history. Uh, when I went to college, they said that art history was unnecessary, that you could experience it as you needed it, and that was an interesting approach to art history. I was very slow in acquiring it. <laughs> I went straight to Bennington College from there. Well, it started out with painting, and then it went into graphic arts, and then swung around into architecture. The first architecture professor I had was um, very interested in reconstruction and oh. that kind of thing. And then I think modern art was really working on us quite hard, particularly at Bennington. And uh, Richard Neutre was one of my professors who did quite a bit of work in Philadelphia, actually. And I finally got back to what I really like to do is to redo old buildings. My daughter was looking for a place to have a small restaurant. And <laughs> I got into the cafe at the Grand and the kitchen at the Grand Hotel and kept thinking, there's something here, I'm not sure what it is, and finally went down to the town building and they had thumbnail sketches of how the buildings used to be. It was done every 10 years. They were just done in pencil. But they showed me what the building had once had, which was one huge, beautiful dining room with cast iron columns in the middle and a high ceiling, which is now about eight and a half feet. And then we took the ceilings out. There were three of them. And as the ceiling got dirty, they dropped the ceiling, which has made sense, of course. And so once we got back, the, the, and then we found the original configuration through the paint jobs up on the top ceiling and area. And it was fascinating to take it. We took it apart, basically. Uh -huh. And we did the first floor and opened the bar and, and restaurant. And then two years later, did the second floor. And to have that building, which is basically the big building in town, having that put back together and look like it wasn't going to fall in the street, uh, got the whole town fascinated. It was, it was fun. Even the bank across the street came over with their plan of doing a new facade on the bank that would complement our wonderful building. I mean, that kind of thing was exciting. I became an art teacher because my children were at West Town Friends School, and uh, I was invited to talk to the headmaster about employing an art teacher for the upper school, and as he said, admitted he didn't know much about art, and so we discussed several people that had applied for the job, and in doing this, I, as I left, I said, I wish you'd got a new art teacher for the lower school, because I think the children are not doing what I consider art. Mm -hmm. and, he said, and, and he said, then you're hired. I said, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> and I taught there for six years, and in doing that, I really had an interesting time, because I found that the main thing that I managed to do was not produce beautiful artwork, mm -hmm. but the kids had a wonderful time with it, and they learned to observe, and to me, that's really a part of art. I think basically the, the, the thing you've got to know is that everybody is seeing things a little differently than the next person, mm -hmm. and including you, and allowing that to, to, to be part of it. One of my daughters went to Moore College for four years, and she had a problem in the printmaking course, and so I went to the president of the college and said, help. And he said, what? And I said, come with me. And we had a slight discussion. And the next thing I know, I was a board member. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Having been chairman the last few years, uh, the facilities 
sort of became paramount in my mind, mainly because Moore was struggling with total lack of facilities for a long time. They looked like we were an orphan child in among some rather nice things. And now I feel very pleased that I can say, there's Moore College. Mm -hmm. I feel very strongly that women's education or single sex education, whether it's for girls or boys, doesn't make any difference. It's the fact that you don't have any choice anymore, that we're down to three or four schools, and that's sort of sad. To me, mm -hmm. there are people who work better in a single sex atmosphere, and what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. But everybody feels that this pushing everybody together is terribly important, and I think it backs education down a lot. I think sponsoring a, a scholarship student brings you very much in contact with them. Uh, I, I think it's good to have the students know that their people are, are thinking about them and, and taking them seriously. And I think more can do that in that they are, are small enough to treat the individual. This is the important thing.